getting his, uh, his magnum opus play done everywhere, uh, he talked about doing the curatorial thing, where he would go and visit these productions. Mm -hmm. uh, in a smaller sense, you're getting a chance to do that now with uh, a few of your works. Yeah. So what's that like for you to drop in on a show as you dropped in on this one this weekend? Um, well, it depends. I don't. I don't always. Uh, I don't always go. Um, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes there's something nice about not going, and then just knowing that it's happening, and you can imagine it's perfect in every respect. <laughs> um, uh, so there's that. Um, but it's always really fun to um, I, with a play like The Four of Us, which I'm, which I'm proud of, and I feel like I wouldn't be able to. I mean, I wrote the first draft of this play six years ago, almost exactly like six years ago. So I wouldn't be able to write it now. Like I don't have the same, not just in terms of craft, but like in terms of what I'm thinking about and, and the way I write. So in a way that makes it easier to come in and just enjoy it for what it is, because I'm, my brain isn't tinkering with it anymore. It almost feels like a play by somebody else. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and I also really, I mean, I saw this for the first time last night, this production, um, and I think it's beautiful. Like I really, it's, the design is completely <laughs> is gorgeous, first of all. Yeah. I just think it's a physically beautiful yeah, production. Yeah. And the two actors, they're great and mm -hmm. also so different. I mean, I've seen, I guess, four or five. <coughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen all the times it's been done, but I've seen three, four, five different pairs of guys do this play. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, in, in what ways have the <coughs> tandems told slightly different stories? I mean, it's, and I'm interested in the, we knew uh, some of your actors from earlier shows. Uh, Sean Dugan was somebody who did a world premiere of Bob Brewstein, a uh, uh, play back here back in 2006 or seven, I forget. But So uh, we know a lot of these actors. I, I saw the one in New York, and uh, so I'm curious what you see are some of the um, textual, you know, texture differences, uh, just from a texture <coughs> point of view, um, given that they're all wonderful. Yes, they're, first of all, they're all wonderful. Uh, I don't know, it's just, it's like a different, I mean, it's like, a, it's hard to talk about it in ways that don't sound completely abstract. <laughs> it's like the, the music of it can be quite different from pair to pair. I mean, there's only the two of them and they're talking for, you know, the entire time. And so it, it, it infuses every single aspect of the experience. Um, I think that, uh, um, yeah, for instance, I've seen takes on David, for instance, the, the, the um, the character that the, the playwright that Carl Miller plays here that are that are like more overtly nerdy than his, more sort of like Woody Allen-ish. Sure, I've seen takes on um, on on Benjamin. Um, Dan's is quite emotional, you know, like he's he he play. You're saying because <coughs> Dave does a lot of describing <coughs> yeah. of Dan, of Benjamin yeah. as being very. Self-possessed, yeah. self-contained, and, and, not and I've not seen performances sexual. of it where the, where the where the performance is quite like really opaque and closed off. And Dan's isn't that way. And right. He manages to get sort of the aloofness that's described, but he does it in a different way. Where you see the there's like this anger in him that's really interesting that I've not seen huh. in other. So it's and it's and I wasn't part of the process, so I don't know how they arrived at those choices. But they but um, it's really <coughs> interesting to hear, and I think it completely works. And the and also the there are a couple of moments. That, um, there are two that stand out for me in this production that I haven't seen done quite that way, but that underline certain things in the text that I don't think have ever landed quite so specifically. There's one at the end of the first sequence of um, the phone call interspersing with the, uh, the talk back mm -hmm. at the bookstore. And the, the way that scene ends is David's on the phone, he says, I feel like I'm forgetting something. And Benjamin is calling on the next person to ask questions. He says, yes, you. And that's, in a way, it's in an intentional, like, I'm forgetting something. Yeah, you're forgetting about yourself, and I sort of, but it's never been staged, before this production, I've never seen it staged in a way that like, that, that sort of, it just, it's so clear the way it's been staged here, and so I, I like that, and then. And that's mirrored in the second split scene. Yeah. Where the, um, when he's, when, when Dave's calling out the director. Oh yeah. Like a fraud, a charlatan, how do you like, <coughs> but there's no question who he's delivering it to. At this right. Point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and then the other one is at the end of the dorm scene where they're listening to music. Um, the the scene continues. They sit there listening, 
to the song for like, I don't know, I mean, it's probably five seconds, eight seconds. In theater time when no one's talking, that feels like two minutes. But like, I was like, and, and last night I was watching it and I was like, why is this silence going on for so long? Um, did someone forget to call the queue? Where's the next? And then he, he's added this moment where, or I don't know, maybe they came up with it all together, that where Carl just looks down at the manuscript right before the lights go. And, and, and it's, a, it's a way of sort of closing, of like weaving together the idea that here, oh, you're hearing this band in a really early stage yes. that no one knows about yet, and the book, of course, is that, yes. which is yes. in there to close. What do you think the theater needs from its writers right now, <coughs> or, and, and you among them. What do you, you know, what is the play that you would like to write that you think would be most needed? Well, that, I mean, that's interesting. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think that, um, well, I mean, one literal answer to your question is that is that I'm excited about. I recently did a rewrite of Yellow Jackets um, post Berkeley that sort of has expanded them a little bit, and um, in a literal sense, I think that could be an interesting contribution to um, a very sort of current conversation about race and um, I mean specifically race in public schools, but even more broadly, public schools is a microcosm of urban America and like the you know America's ability slash inability to deal with it. It's as like a, as a diverse country, but but in a larger, more abstract way, like I don't. Another kind of writer might have a different answer to this, but my honest answer is that I don't. I cannot like think in those terms. I think that like twenty years after something, or fifty years later, people look back and they're like, and those writers were part of the whatever school, and but like no one at the time is like. I mean, but then you read history, people are like, I'm starting a school. People do it all the time. And then they go live in a house. And but um, but I, I like I can't think in those terms. Like I so I sort of think that um, what the theater needs from its writers is for them to like shut out like noise about what else might be needed and just sort of listen to their own sort of talent or their own views or whatever that is and sort of follow. You know what I mean? Like to keep to keep writing honestly and to keep sort of pushing themselves and not. I don't know. Um, more plays would, like you, more plays like you just that's, that's, a, that's a nice thing to say. But yeah, I mean, ideally, like that was my, that was my hope for it. And and to, uh, but then for me, ne for me, never to write a play quite like this again because I'll have changed and to write something, and to write something else. And then in a slightly more practical way, it would be nice if less of them wrote one play that appeared off Broadway and then disappeared to Los Angeles to write TV for ten years. Um, but you can't blame anybody for doing that. Like, people have more. Mm -hmm.